Hi there, and welcome to Chapter 7.1 from Stevens' Introduction to Statistics, the Think and Do book. In this section, we're just going to introduce confidence intervals, but I'm going to go back up here. I have a, a separate video on this, but I, I, it's worth um, repeating. Um, the idea in this chapter is we are going to estimate population means and proportions from sample means and sample proportions. And we start at, at this game by first coming up with a point estimate. And a point estimate for, say, the population mean is just the mean from your sample. And a point estimate for your population proportion is just the proportion from your sample. And the reason we're only doing means and proportions is because these are what are known as um, unbiased point estimates. It means the sample mean is an unbiased point estimation for the population mean, and a sample proportion is an unbiased um, point estimate for a population proportion. So that's where we start with these point estimates. The problem is the point estimates are, are no doubt wrong. Right? They are most assuredly in error in the sense that if you get a sample mean, that's probably not equal to the population mean. So we do a little better, better than that, and we create an interval in which we think the population mean or proportion exists. And then we quantify our confidence in that interval. How confident are we that the actual population parameter, such as the mean or proportion, lies within the interval we quoted? Um, and this whole process is called creating a, a confidence interval. Right. And it represents our first encounter with inferential statistics, meaning we take sample data and we try to make inferences about population information. Okay, so let's get started. And I'm going to switch into full screen mode here. Looks like I've got the whole picture. I'm going to change that. Okay, so suppose, and, and some of these terms might not um, be immediately obvious what they are, but I'll, I'll, build, I'll build up the, the material as we go along. But suppose we want a 95% confidence interval um, for a population mean, right? So we're going to try to create an interval in which we think the population mean lies, and we want to be 95% confident that that is the case. So the way we start, we sort of back up and pretend. And back in the last chapter, we discussed the distribution of sample means. And so what that means is that we get a, you know, what basically we, we would draw this normal distribution. And if we could find the middle 95% of all sample means, right, that's the distribution of the sample means right here. Distribution of sample means. Okay, And so what we know is that the mean of the means, right, the mu sub x bar is equal to the population mean. So that's why it's centered about the population mean. And so what we want to do is find the interval around mu in which 95% of our sample means will lie. And this is, based, this is pretty much a theoretical distribution because we can't possibly take every single sample, and so it's based on theory. Um, okay, and that theory does require that our sample size is greater than 30 or the parent population was normally distributed. But if we were to go about doing this, to find the middle 95% from a normal distribution, well, if we convert the x bars to z scores, then I need to get this middle 95% of z-scores. Right? So the idea is this. We need to find z sub alpha over 2. There's a plus and a minus version. Right? And that separates the middle 95% from the others. But to get that value, I have to look at, say, this area here. Right? And this area here, since this is 0.95, this is going to be point we're going to split the remaining 0.05 into the two tails. So if you take the 0.05 and split it in half, right, that gives us 0.025 in each tail. Right? And so to find this, we'd have to go to our, say, our z table, for example. 
And if we did that, uh, let me put this in full size as well. We want to look for 0.025. It's going to be a negative z score. So we're going to look for 0.025 inside the table. And actually, I used all capital letters when I was playing this game, right? Inside the table. That means in here. So if I look for 0.025, got to look around, but it actually has the exact value, if I recall, there it is, 0.025. That's the one we're looking for. And so the z-score that corresponds with that is negative 1.96. I'm going to go back to where we were. So this value is negative 1.96, and the positive version of that is going to be 1.96. Positive, right? Okay, so that means that if we take the standard deviation and go up 1.96 standard deviations and down 1.96 standard deviations, we'll get the middle 95%. And the standard deviation of the sample um, means is this. It's the population mean divided by the square root of the sample size. And this all goes back to the central limit theorem from chapter 6 point, uh, I believe, 4. Okay, so that's the idea. We come up with this margin of error, right? And so we go up one margin of error, down one margin of error, and that should get us the middle 95% of all sample means. Okay, so there's some notation here that seems a little weird. First off, um, E is called the margin of error, capital E, and that will be in every section that follows in this book, um, in this chapter. Alpha is 1 minus the confidence level in decimal form. So in our case, alpha is 0.05, right? And so the area in this tail is actually alpha over 2. And so that, that tells us why this thing, this z, negative z sub alpha over 2 and positive z sub alpha over 2. Those are just names. There's actually no dividing going on. That's just a fairly complicated name for a, for a z value that puts alpha over 2 in the lower tail and the, and the upper tail. Right. So it's just a name, and it's somewhat descriptive because it's telling us alpha over 2 is in the nail, is in, is in the tail. Okay, and sigma is the population standard deviation, and n is the sample size. So what that means is that, in theory, 95% of the sample means fall within capital E of the population mean. Right. So let me say that again, and I'll go to the next page and say it again. In theory, 95% of the x bars will be within e of mu. In fact, 95% of the sample means will be within e of the population mean. But that's in theory. In practice, what that means is 95% of the time, mu will be within e of x bar. Right? So that means if we can find x bar, we can then get this margin of error e and be 95% confident that the population mean is within e of the sample mean. So another a few ways of saying this. 95% of the time, mu, the population mean, will be between x bar minus e and x bar plus e. And to use inequalities, you can say that the same way by saying... 95% of the time, mu is greater than x bar minus e and less than x bar plus e. And using interval notation, we say mu is an element of, or is in, this interval. And so this is the interval notation right here. All right. So all of these actually work. We will probably be dealing, just to emphasize what we're dealing with here, we're going to um, use inequalities here. Because it really, it really shows that our population mean is between two values. And the confidence level basically gives us the success rate of our procedure. 
right? We're 95% confident in this interval means that 95% of the time the actual mean will be within the interval estimate. So let's start with a preliminary example. So I have the heart rates of 35 randomly selected adult men. The mean from the sample, x bar, is 72.5. And we'll assume the population standard deviation, sigma, is 10.2. All right. What I want to do is find the point estimate from mu, the margin of error at the 95% confidence level. The 95% confidence interval for our population mean mu. And to make a nice sentence to wrap this all up. OK, so to start off, the point estimate is really the easiest thing to do. The point estimate of the population mean is just the sample mean. So that's 72.5 beats per minute. All right, there's really no calculations, well, other than getting the data and calculating the mean. The margin of error, remember that was back on the previous page, looks like this. Z sub alpha over 2. And we can find those values, Z sub alpha over 2, by putting 0.025 in the one tail, and then looking for our z value inside the chart, which we did in the on the previous page. There's something worth noting, though, and I'll point it out right here. There's a little shortcut, a little cheater table that's put in here to help you out with these values. And so here they are, common critical values for confidence intervals. So if we're at the 0.95 confidence level, or the 95% confidence level, our value is 1.96. And that's what we found back here. We found negative 1.96, but that was the negative value of our critical value. And if we change confidence to, say, 90% or 99%, we get different critical values. Right? So those are the three most popular confidence levels, and so you don't have to go, you don't have to necessarily play the whole game of putting alpha over two into one tail and finding the z-score. So that sort of helps speed, thing along, speed things along for us. Let's go back up here. So what we did, so we found our critical value, z sub alpha over two is 1.96. And then sigma is the population standard deviation, which we found to be 10.2. And then we divide by the square root of n, which was 35. We had a sample of 35. When you do that, you get 3.38. And that's what we call the margin of error, right? 3.38. So basically, we have a sample mean of 72.5 beats per minute with a margin of error of 3.38. So when we create the confidence interval, if we use interval notation, we'll first take x bar minus e, minus e, which is, um, what did I, what do we have for x bar? 72.5 minus 3.38, and that's going to give us 69.1. So that's this lower value. And then if we take the sample mean and add one margin of error, we get this upper value. So that's the actual confidence interval, 69.1 to 75.9. We're going to round to one decimal place just like we round the mean to one, one decimal place. Um, OK, but it, so this is the way we will do it in here. In order to emphasize our goal of predicting mu, I'll write it like this. Mu is between 69.1 and 75.9. Right? Or you could also use the interval notation. But I prefer the notation with inequalities. OK, so, so what do we do? We came up with this interval, and you may have forgot what we actually did. So we're going to end with a concluding statement that sort of wraps up um, everything we did. Since this was a 95% confidence level, I am 95% confident that the mean pulse rate for all men, right, not just the sample, is between 69.1 and 75.9 beats per minute. So we took a sample mean of 72.5 calculated a 95% confidence interval, which involved a margin of error. And then we take that margin of error, we subtract it from our sample mean, add it to the sample mean, and we get our confidence interval. And the confidence level basically tells us 
how confident we are. It's the success rate of this process. So 95% of the time this process works. So we can say I'm 95% confident the mean pulse rate for all men. And when I say all, I mean the population mean. Right? So we've taken a sample statistic and estimated a population parameter. And this encounters our first um, or this is uh, our first encounter with inferential statistics. We take sample data and make an inference about the population value. So that wraps up the introduction and we will actually do specific types of confidence intervals in the next section. So we're good to go. Bye now.